Look who's here. Who is it? It's Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Is this working? Yeah, I see you just fine. <laughs> Yay, you can hear me okay? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you just fine. It's Adrian Hill, awesome. everybody, from the uh, roving reporter from the Skeptic Zone, <laughs> as well as other things she's been doing. This woman is so busy. I happened to catch her. Just happened to catch yes. her. Yes. Well, plus, because I'm, uh, I'm so excited that I'm visiting my son in Boston, who I haven't seen since Christmas 2019. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> A stupid pandemic. <laughs> Him and his wife both were, were here. So uh, we're just connecting with them. And we were, yeah, we, it's so exciting just to be here. And so yeah, you are lucky to connect with me right now because we have a bit of downtime right before dinner. So yeah, you know, a little time. How's it been going? Done. Congratulations for hitting that. Uh, I I didn't do it. I just started this crazy, stupid, crazy thing. It wasn't supposed to be a thing. It wasn't supposed to work. It's just like Wikipedia. It shouldn't work. This is stupid. Whoever thought that we could create a online online encyclopedia that anybody could edit in all languages and, and it would exist 20 years later and it would be like the thing that it is it's like the most popular one of the most popular websites in the world and for somehow yes. some crazy reason it works i don't know why what do you think adrian why do you think it works why does Wikipedia work or why does GSOW work? Why does Wikipedia work? And then you can follow up with why GSOW works. Uh, I think it works because it's easy access to things you want to know. In the old days, we used to go to the encyclopedia. You have sets of encyclopedias, I know. My grandparents had sets of encyclopedias. We had sets of encyclopedias. And if we wanted to know something, that's usually where we would go. Mm -hmm. and I think it's quicker, faster, and it's just another form of encyclopedia, as well as it's so much more information. It's just updated. It's, it, it's updated regularly, mm -hmm. right or wrong, <laughs> but mostly right. <laughs> That's one of the things I think I've been so impressed with when wrong information ends up on Wikipedia with our alerted pages, it's usually changed back before I can even get to the page and it's, it's corrected and updated. It's, it's mm -hmm. pretty impressive. So I'm trying to find a place in my son's place here to <laughs> sit down. I was in the kitchen because it was better lighting, but they didn't like me in there because they could hear me. Oh, <laughs> they're, wow. trying to, they're trying the to talk. The whole family is a part of the team, even if they're not yeah. a part of the team. Well, that's true because I know for my first edit that I did, which was Haunted Houses, my son Cam and my son Troy and my husband, they all proofread it before because I was so scared to post anything on Wikipedia. And they, <laughs> they all proofread it before I, I submitted it. Well, I, not only them, but then I put it up on the um, cabal mm -hmm. and they edited it galore. I boy, did lots of really great changes offered there. And so by the time it was ready to go be published, it was there's been very little changes since then, which is great. A couple spelling you mistakes. Right? Or, well, uh, with the help of the whole group, I mean, really, because that's one, of the, one part of the process, right? You put, post it in the cabal and everyone looks at it and tears it apart. And <laughs> Kindly. We're all kind. Oh, it's great. No, but it's a good tear apart, right? It's not yeah, a feedback. It's not a bad. Point. No, we learned from it, especially as a, as a newcomer. That was my first big article. And, and it was great to learn a lot of different things that I needed to know. And each article afterwards, of course, I needed to learn new things because my next one was a person. Mm -hmm. And then there was the whole living person thing <laughs> that we had to be so careful about. And that was a big learning curve. And it's still, I'm still learning a lot. So it's, it's great. Well, I'm still learning from you all too. I mean, it's, it's I try to keep people, people tell me this, they, they, they'll call me the expert on Wikipedia. I'm like, I am far from an expert. I am a trainer and a manager. That is it. I don't, my, 
I train people in the basics and I train them on the way yeah. I want to be, wish I had been trained. And then they always surpass me. They go, yeah. and then they're always the experts <laughs> compared to me. I, I like to keep myself jargon free as much as I can and beginner wise as much as I can. Cause I, cause that's what I'm doing is dealing with just train uh, beginners. And I don't want to be like throwing out like uh, uh, some new language to them or something too often, you know? So there's like yeah. 10 things that I'll, I'll, I might use, you know, like, I don't even know what the words I would use, but, and that's part of the, the joy of it is that um, you guys all become amazing. And I don't, I don't have to be the expert. <laughs> Nobody, nobody needs to default to me is what I'm trying to say. You, yeah. you learn how to ask the questions to find the answers, or you mm -hmm. have a team that will help you find the answers. Cause some of the people have been in the group for years. Don't know. Yep. Some well, and that's what was really great. You encourage even in the training for us to, uh, to, if we have a question, not just to ask you, but to throw it into the cabal. Mm -hmm. and it's a very intimidating thing it you was to me not. anyway mm -hmm. it was it was really intimidating I think partly because there were people from all around the world that greeted me when I first joined mm -hmm. and you know you don't really know these people but then after you post a couple of questions and everybody's so kind and has so many good suggestions it's you realize very quickly that it's a great resource so, you know, that, that is part of the training, right? Go and post your question in the cabal. And, it, it, <laughs> and I, I laugh every time I think of that. <laughs> the, the secret cabal. The cabal. <laughs> the not so a, secret yeah. cabal. <laughs> but no, it's a, it's a very safe place to be. And it's, it's been, I love it. I love the people there. I think it's been such an amazing experience. I can't believe it because it's 2018. Is it that I first hooked? I first have it right here. Adrian Hill, where are you? Oh my gosh, where are you? There you are, line 61. <laughs> um, you are, oh, you joined in May of 2018 and you yep. came from the article on null. The Null Hypothesis by David Gorski. Yeah. You never know how these things touch people. It's really, <laughs> it's really interesting to see. I always ask everybody who joins, what is it that made you join yeah. or what was it you were looking at or whatever? Because, I mean, is it podcast? Usually it's podcast, but it's once in a while it's an article and, and the Null. Yeah. Okay, tell us what that was about. Gorski. It was about Gary Null. Apparently Gary Null, and I'd never yeah. heard of him before. That was sort of back in when I was still fairly fresh with this whole movement my it really goes back to a car accident my son had where he totaled our car and we suddenly needed to have another car and he was in the car with us to go and pick this car up and we had a three-hour drive there and a three-hour drive back and he wanted to listen to the skeptic's guide to the universe which I'd never listened to before and I really enjoyed it especially the science or fiction component and then when we got home I couldn't get enough of this podcast. And then I found out about Stephen Novella's blog. And then from that, I found out about science-based medicine. And I was reading this Gary Null article about how he was not very happy with David Gorski, Stephen Novella, and this woman named Susan Gerbeck. <laughs> You're like, who? <"Nope." laughs> I didn't know anything about this guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia, but it's just the, I think it was a paragraph about you in this article about Gary Null. And it, it actually, he did a really good job of capturing your spirit, I think, in that. Gorski did or Null? No, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not Null. Null would have not have been <laughs> very complimentary. But no, Gorski, who really made it sound like you were a fun person and that you, you were really wanting to make a difference in combating this pseudoscience. And I thought I was at a place where I was thinking of retiring. My health wasn't that great with migraine headaches. And my school actually got closed down that year. And so I thought, well, this is a good time to retire and do something different. And that's how I started. 
and I've never regretted it. So it's, it's been a great, great process. I've got to meet people I've written articles about, not, not in person yet because of, you know, COVID. Well, who's, who's, who's met anybody in person pretty much? <laughs> I've only met you in person once and that was at uh, SciCon. That was SciCon 20... 2000. 18. 18. Yeah. 2018. Yeah. You were so, just quiet in the background. Like I'm going to be editors. And I was, just I to, was, I'll stand over here to the side. I don't I want to be part shy. of the group. I will, I will stand on the periphery. I've got a picture of you. We're all gathered around Jeff's computer and Carl with the K's there and they're all gathered and there's like seven people behind him watching him make an edit and you're way over to the side on your yeah. phone. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually had more to do probably at that conference with Rob Palmer because Rob Palmer was pretty outgoing and he was very welcoming as well. And it, it he took a video, I believe, or took a bunch. I think it was a video of me up with Banachek, and he still gives me a hard time about being a shill for Banachek because <laughs> I I, uh, I was taken up on stage, even though I said to my husband when we walked in the art uh, in the ballroom. I said, let's sit in the middle of the middle so that he won't pick me to go up on stage. And Banachek still, I don't know, there's something about me. And he uh, kept looking at me and I'm thinking, he's going to pick me. And he did. And up on stage, I went and I, with my eyes closed the whole time. And I have no idea how Banachek did any of it. But Rob doesn't believe me. He thinks that I somehow was in cahoots with him, but nope, <laughs> I have no idea what went great on. When we go to Cyclone again, and we can we, hopefully we're going to go see Banachek. I know he was really good, mm -hmm. from what I understand, because I had my eyes closed for that whole se segment. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't really know what was going on, but lots of laughter was happening. That's for sure. <laughs> so Rob, uh, I believe it was Rob. It may have been somebody else who actually recorded the whole thing. So I actually have it. <laughs> on my phone so oh yeah my my performance so that was my introduction into the world of gorilla skepticism on wikipedia i even had a t-shirt at that time so, oh that's right yeah that that was the early days and you're right i was quiet i'm not so quiet anymore now you can't shut me up oh well, that's fine <laughs> that's absolutely fine i don't care I like talking people and people who don't talk. All people, 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 people. Well, and and it's so funny too because through you, I I've, I've met well, and your trivia, that was a, a big part of it. But through you, before trivia, uh, I've become friendly friends with uh, Ben Radford and Kenny Biddle and Celestia Ward and you know Richard Saunders at trivia. They're all There's really so nice. Many. They're all yeah. wonderful. You know, everybody's happy to meet you. And it's funny because people will be like, oh, I'm I'm skept I'm starstruck. And you're like, they're just people. Yeah. <laughs> and they want to help. Like I've sent so many questions to either <clears throat> excuse me, Ben Radford probably mostly because of my work on the haunted house and then ghosts after that. Mm -hmm. but ghosts particularly with Ben Radford and Kenny Biddle but they answer questions they they'll, there's no problem if I have a question I say hey do you have a source for this or can you remember who did this there's there was once an article I found in Skeptical Inquirer that didn't have an author name author name on it and so it, it was all about ghosts so I figured it was either Kenny Biddle or Ben Radford and it turned out it was Ben Radford so, oh, yeah, you know, that is that is something we can mention, too, is that when you work for GSOW, you are also working as a part of the community. I mean, you could just work on your Wikipedia pages and just get them yeah. brushed up. But we do outreach, you know, yep. sometimes we need to get photos and yes. the photos need to probably come from the person. So you may have to contact them and or some people work on Wikipedia pages for museums or whatever. That means if it's a museum near you go to the museum and you yeah. take some pictures. If even just yeah. stand outside and take a picture or we can ask somebody who lives near it. And this, and like you said, whenever you were working on Haunted House, I said, okay, you're going to be doing Haunted House. That's crazy for your first project, but okay, you're doing Haunted House. Um, you'll be, uh, if you have questions, you're going to go to uh, Ben Radford and these people, you know, and, and yeah. then you're like, oh, oh, okay. Like, yeah, really I nice. had, they'll be fine I had those books you on, just you tell know, them you're working on a project yeah. for me for wikipedia your part of susan's team 
they'll be like, oh, okay, sure. I'll help you. Because yeah. of course they know that how important it is to get these Wikipedia yeah. pages written correctly. Exactly. But also give it, just saying that you're a volunteer Wikipedia editor has gotten me to meet authors and talk to them and Zoom with them. And now my latest one, uh, as some of you know, is with Carolyn Porco. And How horrible she's... that you have to work with this famous, <laughs> amazing scientist. I was like, I, I started speaking of starstruck because I was like, oh, this is so exciting because I'd seen her talk just before the pandemic. It was, uh, th she came to Calgary and talked with Richard Dawkins and it was the day after we got back from PsyCon. Oh, so, really? That's, I didn't realize it was that soon. Yeah. Yeah. So it was 2018 and we really enjoyed her talk. So when the opportunity came to work on her page, I jumped at that. That was really, really exciting. And of course, it's a team. We've got uh, Robin Canton and I can't remember the other fellow who offered at the end he was going to help out. But again, it's not just me. It's it's a team of people who are going to do it as well as, of course, Carolyn Porco. She's kind of sending me in the right directions with resources because I don't have access necessarily to papers or journals that she has access to that we might need to use as citations. So it works out really, really well. And she's been great. We've um, just before I went on holidays, I sent her a, a letter saying what I'd done and where I'm heading and she's all over it. So it's, it's really fun working with these really <laughs> great people. <laughs> Well, yeah, just look at look at Rob Palmer being able to yeah. meet with and hang out with uh, John Delancey too. I know. I was I was on a plane yesterday for that. I was so sorry to, to miss that, but I, I I saw it's up already, so I'll yeah, look it, forward it was, to watching. It was fab fabulous. He did a fantastic yeah. job. Not a standard uh, Q and A at all. And sorry, Mark's making he's I don't know herding cats in the background or something. Else. <laughs> herding cats in the background. Yeah, I can hear, okay. hear him going. Get out of here! You need to get it. And it's, it's a cat <laughs> trying to get out of the room okay you guys well you might hear some talk in the background here too but <laughs> it's fantastic that they have uh that you're over in boston finally oh my gosh i went to go see sterling in seattle i hadn't seen him yes. since and yes it was like so surreal not to be around your family it's and it's so it's very emotional because uh, we we tried to do this in the summer but we just thought it was too early and my husband had a big meeting the following week so we got stranded in Boston because for some stupid reason even though double vaccinated you can still test positive for COVID so we were really really worried about it and we've delayed it and I think we're glad because the testing is a lot more you know because we still have to get the testing before we have to get the testing before we go back to Canada it's a lot easier it was really difficult to find before now things are you know there, it takes time for everything to to happen right so the infrastructure seems to be there it was very easy for us to get a test in Calgary before coming here and we already have our test booked to go back so it, it, it's a lot easier so we're here finally and when we were standing at the border and the border guard was asking us what why are we traveling to the U.S.? And I almost, I, well, I came close to crying, but I got really, really excited. And I said, I'm going to see my son that I haven't seen for two years. <laughs> got married. Well, I was just... <laughs> exactly. And he just laughed and he was smiling. And then he looked at my husband, who was just kind of standing there. And he goes, doesn't look like you're quite as excited. <laughs> he was in, in, excited in, in, her, in her exactly inner, oh yeah he's inner, inner inner excitement but mine is very you know out there and kind of flamboyant and but it was it was it was really really emotional like you said it's 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 hard to be apart from your kids even though we have these great distances before it was like oh I'll just hop on a plane and go we well, can't yeah, you do can that just now. Go. yeah yeah you can't yeah, do yeah, that now. Did, um, to the United States that's 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 so much more. I mean, yeah, just the borders were closed and, and so on. Yeah, uh, and they're fi finally opening them up in November, I think, for for driving. They're still not open. Tell me, tell me about emotional. Uh, one of the Wikipedia pages you wrote, I I said, oh, and I, think, <laughs> I think this is your page to write. Yeah, that was a really tough one. That was Lady Ganga. I'm assuming you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah, that one had, Ganja. that was, that was, Ganja. what was that? Ganja, isn't it? 
uh, is it you Ganga? Said, you said Gaga. No, Ganga. Ganga. <laughs> It's the Ganges River, but I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I like to mispronounce things. I'm, I am really your, your, what would you call me, sister? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Canadian. You're allowed you're to not. mispronounce things. You just say exactly. how we say it in Canada. <laughs> how we say it in Canada. That's right. How we say it in Canada. But th yeah, that's that was a really, it was a bittersweet page to do for sure because she was so amazing tell people and who it is or what it is so uh lady ganga is her her name is um i'll, pull it oh, boy. I'll put yep. it up me and names are not good i can never remember people's names it's terrible michelle uh, michelle um Crazy. oh perfect look at that and there's a whole bunch of easy page <laughs> yeah but she exactly who would have thought and that one took a lot of investigation because it happened so long ago and what happened is she it was diagnosed with cervical cancer and it was she did have treatments but ultimately it claimed her life and when she was given I think it was four or six months to live she decided to try to raise awareness for cervical cancer and to promote the HPV vaccine by traveling down the Ganges River on a paddleboard, which she had just learned how to do, which is just amazing to me. And so she broke a world record for women on a paddleboard on a river. I think it was over 700 miles, I believe, or was it kilometers? I think it was miles. And you can read the page for me. I've, it's too small on my phone. That's so right. I, I, I wouldn't be able to. There's I'm just going by memory. Here she is. And they were following yeah. her around by the media. It was, uh, yeah. was, uh, there was her and the media was, was filming, and, and not only filming, but they were doing articles, newspaper articles. They were. And yeah. this Wikipedia page did not exist, you guys. It just, That's right. I, I'd heard of it, but it just didn't dawn on me that, that it didn't exist. I mean, there's a thousand pages that we should probably right that we haven't written and I, I came across it again and I thought oh well this isn't notable enough and then I kind of looked into it and I'm like there's a whole media section of yeah. notable media and that has That's to right. exist to write the Wikipedia page and That's so right. I handed it to you I said I think this is going to be notable enough yeah right off I think wasn't she on she didn't do CNN did she uh th there, there were CNN bits about her M. Uh, um I mean, what is it? Mean, it's the mainstream media. You're, you're probably. Yeah. yeah. And who is the, there was a really famous reporter, Maria Shriver, who did a whole piece on her. Yeah. And that's going to hit it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, you're kind <laughs> of she, at the notability she, mark there. Yeah. As well as the local Albuquerque me, uh, media was mm. all over it and had like weekly or daily articles about where she was the i also found some really great articles in indian papers newspapers because uh, they just fell in love with her and people would you know especially children there i think there's a picture there with her with the kids they would yeah. run out to her and and everybody wanted to know and meet her and she was just sounded like a really gracious and wonderful lady i actually her actually the other one was npr and she was on interviewed by npr so i was able to hear her speak i saw the video the the film the short film that was made and of course all of those things made me cry so that's why it was so hard <laughs> it was i mean it was a wonderful page to do but it was and very moving but i did shed a lot of tears while writing this one because you, you sort of grow to love these characters yeah, you do. and i tell that to people when they pick their first page you know yeah. it's it, picking your first page is like your first love you're gonna yeah. fall for them and we almost always do biographies i like biographies to start with and we only do pages that we need to rewrite because right. i don't want any brand new person trying to deal with a notability issue yes yeah. and biographies are start to finish there's a beginning yeah. there's an end not haunted house like <laughs> you did i don't know what's your for your first project i was like oh my gosh 
Stop. Well, I was on the list Stop. and it said it had been there for, I don't know, 13 years or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, how many years, a lot, it's a lot well, of years. We haven't been around 13 years, but a long <laughs> time to have been there. Yeah. It yeah. Was, it and, was a long time. But my motivation there was because my training took so long because of my stupid migraine headaches. I wanted something that would really ingrain the methodology and what we needed to do into my brain because I kind of left it. And so I figured if I took a big project, I'd remember what to do. So, and it, it did, it worked, right? <laughs> it really worked. I, I really knew the process by the time I finished that project. But I think it took me four months to, to do. Write it? Well, that's yeah, to write it. for you though. Oh yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing unusual about that, but no, but and some people don't, some people are done. Yeah. It, it, I'm the creating editor. a brand new page is, is a, is work. Yeah. It can be, it can be time consuming. Yeah. It just depends. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a fast editor. I'm really, I have a system I'm done in 10 hours. Boom. But yeah. I don't move for those 10 hours. <laughs> Well, God, I gotta go and, and I find I have to really kind of mull over the information. I gather the information. I could get that done pretty quickly, but then I have to kind of let it sit and figure out what the format's going to be, play around with it a little bit. And I also have a tendency to go down rabbit holes. And that's my big thing. Like <laughs> with the Carolyn Porco article, there was a, a Eugene Shoemaker that she was involved with. And I don't want to give too much away because I want you to read the Wikipedia page, but uh, I went down that rabbit hole. <laughs> and I learned all about her relationship with this G Eugene Shoemaker and how when he died, she was instrumental. Well, she organized it, getting his remains to the moon because that was his lifelong dream was to go to the moon and he never made it. And I think he was a geologist. I think is what he's his uh, he, he loved the moon and I don't I've heard of this story is this, this yeah. is not on the page yet it is very briefly mentioned somewhere I think in the lead is where they mention it and they mention it somewhere else on the page but it's very brief but it, I went down that rabbit hole <laughs> that's what I'm saying is that you can and I kind of I've I've made it a little bit of a bigger section and I moved it around of course but uh yeah I thought what a great story and it just it I don't know it just there's something about that story that's tremendous and should be looked at and I also of course went to Eugene Shoemaker's Wikipedia page which this whole thing is mentioned as well so I mean there's the links between the two but yeah it's so that's that's part of the reason that I do take a little bit longer is because I go down these rabbit and, holes. and they're interesting rabbit holes they really yes. are if you could find a way of putting them on I mean there's a fine line between personal exactly like uh, gossipy it's, stuff that you can put on a Wikipedia page and, and actually stuff that's citable but we we pride ourselves at dsow on making the page not look like an academic cv or something we want to make it look like yeah. it's um it's interesting to read um, yeah you want a story like that little bit of a story right it doesn't have to be like the whole story when i looked at the articles that were online were like a big long newspaper page article long right they're quite right. in detail and we have to put it down into a couple sentences so that you know but it's still I, it was you want to get the heart of that story in there at least that's how I think I want right. I want that to be in there so you know I I am slow I'm methodical <laughs> but I do get it done eventually yeah and, and you made some beautiful pages I mean not only Haunted House and Lady Ginja and uh you've done some spirit photography pages spirit yeah, spirit photography. Photography. oh one of my favorites oh my gosh I love Oh yeah, and that one was her and into cycles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that one was uh, something that uh, oh, there were yeah. a lot of rabbit holes. Very interesting. <laughs> Here, I'll show, I'll show you guys the spirit photography page. Isn't this great? And you had to work with Kitty Biddle, I think, right? I did. Yes, and a little. I, I use Ben Radford's books quite a bit. I think there's lots of references to both of those people mm -hmm. there. But there were a lot of articles. What started this one for me was an article that Kenny Biddle had written for Skeptical Inquirer that was about a security system that caught a 
a, a ghost, quote unquote, in a wedding dress, in a construction site. And his article was so interesting. And I went to look to add, just add that little bit to the photography page. And I looked at it and went, I don't even know where to put this because it was just not a great page. So I just redid the page <laughs> and put that particular piece of information in there as well. So that's how that one started. <laughs> Adrian, you're going to laugh. Well, you, you're a photographer also, so you might not yes. laugh at what I'm about to say. A lot of the Wikipedia pages I've written, I've written because I want to put my picture on it. <laughs> Our picture I've taken. I did, a, I, uh, when I went to go see Sterling up in uh, Washington, I went and visited a rhododendron uh, botanical garden. Yes. And I got the most amazing photographs from this botanical garden. And it falls under science. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's science because science is plants and plants are science. So I said, I'm going to, I wanted to have a place to put these pictures. And I just went to the Wikipedia page and I said, oh man, these are, what a, there's no, there's, it's not a Wikipedia page. It's not really good, you know? So yeah. I, I put him in there. I'll, I'm going to show this really quick because is that Greg in the background going, where are you? Why are you talking to Susan on the, on the Zoom whenever you're supposed to be here with your son? That's right. <laughs> I know. I know. Man, I, I'll have her off in a minute. Hold on. Come on. Hold on, everybody. And um, dinner's coming soon. So, you know, we're having a very late European style dinner. So is it late? It's, uh, what time is it here? I don't know. My watch is off. I think it's after eight o'clock here. Um, I just got a message from somebody, Annika, in uh, Germany. She says, oh, I'd love to be on with you guys, but it's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> I'm like, well, what are you doing? Anna? What are you doing? <laughs> How long have you been on, Susan? Oh, a few hours. So this is, it didn't have a, um, it didn't have a main photo. So I went yeah. to the museum and I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to take this picture so that it shows the the logo because I didn't think I'd be able to get them to upload the logo logo but the same idea is just I was yeah. able to put all my photographs that I had taken on the on the um, on the page on the Wikipedia page because I took them and other yeah. people have done similar to that but to me it's the photograph is, is that's right I love the photographs and luckily for spirit photography all of those photos had already been uploaded so it was very easy oh, to, wow. to coordinate them you would be have a really hard time getting that from from uh, uh, the the photographer who who took him originally, Mumler. Mum, 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 <laughs> yeah, Mumler. Mum, yeah, Mumler. Yeah. But that's how you have to do these kinds of things because you've got to. I don't know. So give us some words of wisdom before I let you go back to your your family. Well, if you're frustrated, especially with all the misinformation that's going on out there, and you want to feel like you're doing something. This is a great place to do it. And I have to tell you, I think I'm more patient with people who have bad ideas now, which is probably not a bad thing because I don't think anger gets too far. It won't break through them, but uh, to them. But what I found is doing pages like Christiane Northrup's page oh, made me yes. feel you can't really good. You can't mention that. You have to mention that. <laughs> Tell us about Christiane. Well, this was Alison Long. She was a new member and she posted in the Secret Cabal that there is no page for this woman named Christiane Northrup, who I'd never heard of. And I want to look into that. What's that? I'm going to find out while you're talking. Okay. Yeah. And so I took that on because she was still under training, I believe, or just barely finished it. And so is. I took it on and she provided me with a whole bunch of resources. As I say, we work as a team. It's, it's great. I threw it together and then I got, I think Wyatt looked over it, Wyatt from, uh, from Africa. And he said, you know what, this sounds a bit like a P, you know, it's like a hit piece. You need to put in more fluff stuff. So I found some fluff stuff that thanks to Allison, you know, so it was a team effort, but boy, was that ever a good one to do because she ended up being, making it onto the list of the 12 dif disinformation dozen of people who are spreading misinformation about COVID-19 and vaccines. Yeah, absolutely. So, this is a huge page and I don't think yeah. it's gotten as many views as I would thought. 
Let me try to look really quick. She's uh, oh, it's, it's it's one of my big producers because it depends on how much she's in the media. Mm -hmm. I get between very few and thousands a day. So you've got one hundred and two thousand already. And yeah, and that's, in the last week it's been a thousand, and you wrote it in February of twenty twenty one. That's right. So, so since February, you've got one hundred and two thousand views. That's that's a lot of people looking for information on this anti vaxxer Exactly. QAnon. She also, yeah, QAnon stuff. She's also got lots of really bad medical advice for women's issues. So you know, it's really important if her name comes up that people have good information about her bad ideas. So that makes me feel really, really good. So that's one of the reasons that I do this is because I feel like I'm actually helping a little bit. It may not be a lot. Yeah. But... No, of course you're doing a ton of work. You think about that. That is a massive amount of work. Like Rob was saying earlier, you could write a book and 3,000 people might read it in the lifetime of the book. That's right. This, That's right. You got it instantly at somebody's fingerprints. They don't have to purchase it. They can just yep. go in and look. And people out there who are watching, you may not realize, but this lead, the very beginning, that's very intentionally written the way it's written. Yeah. Because it's going to show up in a lot of places. And, and I'll, I'll show in a, in a minute after I hang up with you. But um, this, this alternative medicine thing, that's another thing that Rob pointed out. Yeah. If somebody comes to this Wikipedia page, it's a one-stop shop on who this woman is. You know, yes. they could say, oh, I heard she was a doctor. Let me look her up. And you look her up and, oh, you've got everything. <laughs> she can't hide this. She, in fact, no. she's very upset. She's really upset there's a Wikipedia yeah. page. Um, Allison talks about that in her talk that she's going to be doing for me on a skeptical, skeptical Ooh. weekend. But Christiane is really not pleased with this Wikipedia page being there. And so the whole idea is that if you come and you want to read and you just want to read enough to know, is this a good person, bad person? When I mean, where, where does she go? You read the lead and you see that inf alternative medicine thing and you're, you, you're done. You don't have to read any further. If you don't want to. <laughs> exactly. That's how it's done. So, yeah. All right, Adrian, thank you so much for talking to us. Anything else I should ask you before you, before you leave? No, I think we're good. I think she's I better get back to my talks. family. She's done a ton of talks for us. So you can find them on our YouTube channel and she's around and come hang out with her and, and play trivia. You're going to be at trivia this week? No, no, not this week. Not this week, but next week for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you and so let, much. Let, yeah. Nice talking to you and congrats again. Yeah, for real. <laughs> How do I get out? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> never I leave. It's like leave. the Hotel California. You can check in, but you can never leave. Never check in. Okay. I figured it out. Never okay, bye. Go, go. Bye bye. It's so fun. Okay, so I don't have anybody else here right now. That is just, it's just me and my cat, Ariadne, we're hanging out here. So let's, let me show you a few things because why not, you know? How many times does it take before you can hit a hundred million page views for a project that started on a whim 